What's up guys? Welcome to another Benzworks tutorial. This is Rich from Benzworks and today we got a great tutorial for you guys. It's the Mercedes-Benz drive belt replacement serpentine belt and the thing here I laid out is for the two different styles of belt tensioners there is. I laid out all the different tools you'll be needing and the rivet I show you there is to lock the belt tensioner in place. I'm going to show you a picture right here of what the two different style tensioners are on the right side you have your older style which uses a e10 inverted torx as an adjuster and to the left the newer style which uses a 17 3 8 um, socket as the adjuster and right there i'm pointing to it that's where you adjust it um, to place the locking pin in place so what you would do is pretty much put it on there and turn it towards the left and this is the older style and as you can see I already took out the older style pulley on there I have a newer style this one which I'm gonna install and pretty much here I'll show you what it looks up up close because you're not gonna be able to see it from the position of when you're changing the belt and that's the adjuster there you will just do the same as the 17 millimeter and just turn that towards the left with your 3 8 ratchet And like I said before, the two different styles, um, all the 273, 272 motors, I'll show you a picture when I'm changing the belt, have the newer style. Um, you're going to have to look at the at your engine itself. But this is the 112, 113 engine drive belt layout, laid out all the different numbers. And to the left is what it should look like, the engine cover. It's either going to be a V6, V6 or V8. So right here, I start out with my 17 uh, millimeter and 3 8 ratchet and I have a rivet to lock it into place first thing I do is place my 17 millimeter on that um, the nut on the tensioner itself and then I'm gonna go down or towards the left until it stops I'm gonna feel for the catch on the tensioner itself and then slide the rivet through let off and then it should lock into place once you have it into locked into place like I do you can see that the tension on the belt has loosened and then you can slide the belt right off. This motor right here is actually uh, a 112 from our ML. I took out the fan and everything else so that we could have some room so you can see exactly what it is I'm doing. So now I got the new belt here and I'd like to start off to the right by the power steering pulley. Some models like the SL, some S-Class, and some CL models don't use a power steering. They use a tangent pump, but it's still the same um, style layout. So I wrap it around the power steering pump and then the idle pulley. And then I switch to here. Now you're going towards the alternator. And I wrap it around there. And then I come upwards towards the water pump. Then I'm going to switch over to the other side so you can get a better view. So now I've gone from the power steering to auto pulley to the alternator around on top of the water pump. And then I pull on the belt. And what I'm doing there is placing it around the AC compressor and placing it into the grooves. And then what I do here is I try to put it around the belt tensioner. The belt tensioner is the last one you're going to want to put it on because you're going to have to slide it on. So I correct all my different uh, parts there. Make sure, they, make sure they're in the grooves. Make sure the belt's in each groove that has to do with the pulley. If not, it's going to be impossible to put it on this tensioner. So here, this belt, some belts are tighter than others. I was struggling with this one to put it on. As you can see. And then when I finally get it after pulling on it as hard as possible. I wasn't trying to um, block the view of the camera. So it made it very difficult to put this on. So if you're struggling yourself, don't worry. As you can see, I've done this many times, but I still struggle with it. Especially with belts that are tighter than others. And one another note, when you purchase a belt, make sure it is for the correct 
motor. Not all of them are the same. They have different part numbers. So there I put it onto the belt tensioner pulley. I center it. I, you're going to want to place it in the middle somewhere. And then what I do is I check over right here. On the water pump pulley, there is like a, a worn out area. It's like a brownish area. You want to be in the middle of that. So you can't see the brown area on the water pump pulley there. And then I want to do is go over each different pulley, make sure they're in the grooves. Um, if you turn on the car and you hear a squeaking noise, that's most likely because it's not in the groove and the belt is spinning around, um, I guess, erratically and is going to cause a noise. So make sure you check all your pulleys. And next, what I'm going to be doing is for the newer style motors, 272s and 273s. And this is how you know if you have 272, 273 has this style engine cover. This is your V6, V8s. So I'm showing you how to take off um, the engine cover here. This is on a C280, I believe. Uh, as you can see, it's very tight, not much room. I'm showing you a couple of things that's going to make it easier to access the, the belt itself. I take out the dipstick. Pretty much, you want to give yourself a decent amount of access to the, to the belt. And then I take this clip off right here with a pocket screwdriver. Different models have more space in the front. Um, your smaller ones like C-Class, uh, GLK, um, mostly SLKs, things like that. Are really, you really don't have much space in between the belt and the electric fan. So here I pull off their, the connection for their um, air box. And then I do the same to the left side. Wiggle it right off. So now I create a decent space in between the engine and the electric fan. So I could get in there and show you guys what it looks like. This is a different layout than the previous one. Okay, this is the layout of how the drive belt goes. Pay attention to the water pump and the crank pulley. Um, they are facing each other and the belt has to go um, almost next to each other. I'll show you when I'm putting it on. This video is pretty hard to get because of the space in between the engine and the body itself. So once again, this is the newer style pulley. I put the newer style pulley on the previous engine. And that's why I showed you the old, older style pulley that I had on there. So for this model, we need a 17 millimeter, nice long um, shallow socket. And I take my 3 8 ratchet. I find the nut on there that's on the tensioner. And again, same thing going towards the left. And then I take my rivet. It's a standard size um, size rivet. And then I search for that little, the little, um, I guess that little notch that's on the tensioner itself. And I slide the rivet through. Then once I do so, I let off. And you should see the slack. You now you can see the slack in the belt because the tensioner is locked in place. Also, if you're changing to a newer style pulley, which I recommend to do, um, if you have the older style, you're gonna have to lock it just like so. And then there's two bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom that holds it in place. I believe it's an E12 inverted torx. If you're gonna change the tensioner itself, and here I'm showing you a bottom view of what it's going to look like. Showing you the what you probably not going to be able to see from up top. You're just going to have to feel around with your hands. Alright, so now I go to take off the belt. I always take it off from the tensioner first. And you can see 
hard to see on this one, but it wraps the water pump on the bottom and it wraps the crank pulley on the top. They're almost touching there. And then I take it up top from the idle pulley and then off from around the power steering pump. And then I take it off from the AC compressor pulley. So now I got my belt out. And then I'm going to go and pull my new uh, belt in place. Alright, so now I got the new belt. And with this one, what I do is I place it on the bottom of the AC pulley. Then I come up towards the power steering pump pulley, place them in the grooves. There's a couple of um, power, the way the power steering lines are fitted on there. It's tough to get the belt around. So, I mean, it might take you a couple times, but be patient, look at what you're doing, take a flashlight, take your time. So there now, I got it around the AC pulley, the power steering pulley, and then from here, I go straight to the idle pulley. I always like to go from right to left and then come back around because I want the belt tensioner to be last. It's the easiest one to get around. So now I go down towards the alternator pulley. Once I go around this idle pulley. And at the same time, um, you got to play around with it, straighten out the belt, pull the slack in it. So here I wrap the alternator. And then next, what I do, I'm pointing here, I'm going to slide it in on the bottom of the alternator, I mean uh, the water pump pulley. Then I come up towards this other pulley. And then I pull the slack or I wrap it around the, the actual tensioner. And you can see here what happened was the belt actually pulled off. But right here, more important, I slide it in on top of the crank pulley. So now it's on. They're almost touching there. And you can see it, it came off from the AC pulley there. So what I do is I pull the belt off the, the belt tensioner. I hold it. And then at the same time, I go and I wrap it back around the AC pulley. So now what I do is get it back into place around the crank pulley. And I want the belt tensioner to be the last pulley so I could slide it on. Now that all of them are in the grooves, I slide it around the belt tensioner pulley. And then I go around checking the belt and making sure they're the belt grooves are in the pulley grooves. Sometimes if they're not in place, you're not going to be able to wrap it around the belt tensioner last. Good thing here that I noticed once I uh, checked it over again. I'm going to um, show this to the camera. I've, I've done this before where it wraps the power steering pulley, but not fully. It's not exactly in the grooves and when you turn it on, it squeaks, and that way you know that it's not the belt itself. It's not correctly on there. So here I try to show the camera. If you look towards the bottom, 
I'll let you know when it's in focus here. If you look towards the bottom underneath that line there, you can see that it's not. You see right there, it's not in place and I just just slid it back on place so it's correctly on there. And then what I do is I put the belt center of the pulley itself, checking every single pulley, making sure it's uh, it's not off the grooves. I check the your generator slash alternator. So pretty much that's what you're gonna have to do, guys. Check it over. You know it's it's a difficult job. You don't want to do it twice. Um, before you try it out, make sure the engine's been sitting for a while so it's not extremely hot and tight um, situations like this. I've gotten burned before in my hand. If you can, get a, like a, a sock or some sleeve if you absolutely have to do it while it's hot. But um, once you've put that on there, you're going to have to take the pin out. Don't forget to take the pin out, the rivet, the locking pin. So I take my 17 millimeter and once again pull towards the left. You're going to have to do left and then pull the pin out and it should tighten the belt. And uh, that's it for this tutorial, guys. Once again, comment. Let me know any questions. Um, next week, we're going to probably have some battery removals, um, how to reset your windows, your sunroof. And that's it, guys. Thanks a lot. Let me know what you think.